the question is that uh, when you apply the Rayleigh damping approach, you get a non diagonal matrix as the damping matrix. Obviously, uh, the damping matrix in the Rayleigh damping approach is what? A naught m plus A 1 k or sometimes also referred to as alpha m plus beta k alpha and beta are two coefficients. <coughs> so, obviously, uh, there is no compulsion that m and k matrices will be diagonal and therefore, uh, there is no compulsion that damping matrix the resulting damping matrix from Rayleigh damping approach is diagonal. But in order to be declared or classified as the classical damping, this product should be diagonal capital phi transpose times C matrix time capital phi again, this should be a diagonal matrix in order for that uncoupling thing to work. right? So, when you construct C matrix by this approach and then you take this product, you will see that the resulting product will be a diagonal matrix. So, therefore, the damping is classical. right? So, in order for uh, this C matrix to fulfill this condition, therefore, we call it this as classical damping. So, just like capital phi transpose m times capital phi is a diagonal matrix, capital phi transpose k times capital phi is a diagonal matrix, this product is also diagonal. Then we can still have an uncoupled equation of motion for any ith single degree of freedom system or any ith mode. right? So, today we will be having an E tabs demonstration on how we can actually see some of the concepts which we have discussed in class, how the commercial finite element based packages handle all of those concepts and implement those concepts. So, let me have a quick overview of what we have discussed about damping in last lecture, maybe in 5 minutes and then I can go to E tabs and show you how we can uh, how we can give that proper input using which the program will be constructing that damping matrix. right? So, this product should be diagonal matrix in order for that damping to be to be classified as the classical damping matrix. So, there were actually two approaches which we have discussed in last lecture uh, for the formulation of damping matrix capital C matrix. Uh, first approach was modal damping approach and the idea was that we directly define the xi i for each mode. We, we define it for each significant vibration mode and then program use all those xi i values to construct back the C matrix and the concept was this one that program will ensure uh, that the damping matrix which is being constructed when you take that product capital phi transpose C times capital phi that resulting matrix is is uh, is a diagonal matrix right. So, this was the concept that if we have the ith modal single degree of freedom system equation. Actually, this is the governing equation of motion in the in the uncoupled form. So, this thing is what capital phi transpose m times capital phi q dot dot plus this square matrix is now is actually capital C actually not capital C it is capital phi transpose times capital C times capital phi again. This product is that scare matrix times q dot vector plus this is what capital phi transpose k times capital phi times q vector is equal to modal forces vector r vector. right? So, this is whatever I have written on top is the is the equation of motion when you actually transform it from u to q using this equation u is equal to capital phi times q right so and then multiply the whole equation with capital phi transpose this is what you will be getting right 
So, if you take out one uncoupled equation from this uncoupled multiple degree of freedom system of equations, this will be that ith mode equation and now you will have an additional modal damping term that is actually you can call it as uh, 2 m omega xi times velocity which is q. When you transform into q then this will become the ith mode xi value, ith mode omega value, ith modal mass right. So, this is change to mu i actually. So, 2 mu i omega i xi i times q i dot right. So, everyone is clear with this additional term which we just included in our single degree of freedom system ith modal single degree of freedom system equation. So, what we can do now is that we already have this mu i omega i we can simply define directly the user can directly define xi i for each mode and then using that the program can construct back the C matrix which will exactly give us this term in the middle right. So, this is that uh, mathematical formulation that let us call that that matrix capital phi transpose times C times capital phi again let us call that product as capital D right. So, d capital D is directly available because all xi i up to xi n all values they are defined by user and mu i up to mu n is calculated from capital phi transpose into m into capital phi and omega 1 and up to omega n they are calculated as a result of classical modal analysis eigenvalue analysis. So, capital D matrix is already is, is already available or it can be formulated directly. So, all we need to do is or actually the program need to do is transform this D back to C and that will become your damping matrix right. So, this is the calculation steps involved in transforming that capital C D into again capital C matrix. So, this is already available right hand side is known already capital phi is known already. So, you can just simply separate the capital C this will become this or alternatively you can also rearrange this whole thing and finally, get C as this thing this is a more easy formulation where D prime is an additional matrix now and it is this matrix, but still known matrix right. So, you can see here that uh, when you take mu inverse times mu inverse times D this whole product actually is called as D prime and whatever left is written directly here. So, using this expression at the bottom you can easily actually the program can easily construct capital C matrices right. So, all you need to provide to program is xi i for each mode like you can directly say that 5 percent damping for all modes or 5 percent damping for first 3 modes and then 2 percent for next 3 modes like that right. So, you have full control on the capital C matrix if you uh, can use this modal damping approach like you can provide your own desired value of xi to each mode whatever you want right. So, you can go through all the experimental results of experimental modal analysis free vibration tests of real buildings and finally, come up with more realistic or representative numbers which you can assign to your new building right. So, C matrix is something which cannot be directly constructed just like M and K matrix it should be provided some information should be provided by the user using which the C matrix is constructed right. So, I will skip all that detail where I showed you some example tables uh, which you can refer to find there are different guidelines also different building codes also guide us that what damping we should use some specific standards also sometimes give us some relevant conclusions that what xi value we should use for different types of structures and within one structure what xi value should be used for different modes. The second method was uh, Rayleigh damping method and uh, 
actually the general formulation is mass and stiffness proportional damping, where the C matrix is constructed using A naught m plus some A 1 k. So, m and k are already constructed by the finite element program. All you need to provide in this case is A naught and A 1. These two coefficients or constants which are uh, more suitable for uh, representing damping values in your structure. right? So, if you set A 1 equal to 0, you will be left with only mass proportional damping. If you put A naught equal a, a not equal to 0, you will be left with the only the stiffness proportional damping. But when both A naught and A 1 are non-zero values, then you have both mass and stiffness proportional damping. The resulting matrix which you will get or the program will formulate at the end will be the classical damping. So, this is mass proportional damping, this is stiffness proportional damping. The basic assumption in mass proportional damping is that the damping in your structure is distributed just like your mass. And here the assumption is that damping is distributed in your structure just like your stiffness. right? So, these are the representations of mass proportional and stiffness proportional damping. The expression, if, if you want to see that uh, what A naught you should give in order to follow mass proportional damping in this case, it is this one. The relationship between xi n and A naught is linear, right? It is 2 xi n omega n, which means that uh, if you want to use, let us say, 5 percent damping for first mode, you will put omega 1 here and 5 percent here and you will get one A naught number. When you put that A naught number in program and go for the mass proportional option, you will be ensuring that your first mode is getting 5 percent, but you will not have any control on the damping of second mode, third mode or any other mode. So, you can control only one mode. The damping uh, can be assigned to one particular mode in this case and all other uh, values will be given automatically by the program. Like for example, uh, if you plot this equation, xi is equal to uh, a naught over 2 omega n, right? This will be simply this this line actually. Uh, actually, yeah, sorry, this declining line, xi is equal to a naught over 2 omega n this is that declining line. right? So, which means that uh, what program will do if you go for this option for a given A naught, it will construct this whole curve and that curve will be constructed for one particular A naught which is given by the user. Now, that A naught is calculated based on the idea that let us say that I want to give this much damping to my first mode. So, the curve which is constructed will be having for example, 5 percent damping given to first mode. So, this will this will be your omega 1 and this will be your xi 1. So, let us assume that I calculated A naught such that I used omega n equal to omega 1 and I use this xi n as xi 1 which is 0 0.05. right? So, in that case the A naught which I provide will actually be used to construct this declining line such that 5 percent number on the y axis will correspond to my omega 1. right? But uh, you cannot control the damping value for omega 2. Let us say omega 2 is here. Automatically, the value of let us say 2 percent will be given to omega 2. Automatically, 1 percent will be given to omega 3 right? and all other modes will be given with some damping value based on that that curve right actually mathematically this will be assigned to your omega 2 omega 3 omega 4 but uh, real structures as i will explain later that it is it is evident from the test results of real structures that first few vibration modes significant number of 
significant modes they all have almost equal damping right so therefore we we need to have uh, mass and stiffness both proportional damping or relay damping where we can control the damping value assigned to two modes right and in between the value almost remain same right so this is this approach is very simple but this is approximate also because you cannot control the value of damping assigned to other modes now if you are sure that only your first mode is going to participate the most in the final dynamic response then you can go for this option and set a not a suitable value which you can calculate using this expression let's say give first mode as 5% damping <coughs> calculate the a not and give it as an input in the program similarly same is the case for stiffness proportional damping that the relationship between omega and xi which you calculate from this approach is a linear approach right it is a linear approach so and it is increasing so you can see here that for example uh, i want to give uh, 5% damping to first mode in this approach so i'll be using omega 1 omega n as omega 1 and 5% as omega 1 xi 1 sorry 0.05 and i will calculate some a1 number now the program will draw a straight line between xi value and omega values right omega will be here and xi will be here and that straight line will be such that the omega 1 will be corresponding to 5% number on y axis right so for example it will make a straight line like this if i draw on on the same axis that omega 1 will be given 5% damping but all other omega 2 omega 3 will be given according to that straight line right so whatever is the value of a particular vibration mode omega value program will interpolate or use that equation to give some damping value to that now one point in this can be that uh, those damping which are automatically being assigned to higher modes they may not be realistic and this is where we need mass and stiffness both proportional damping right mm -hmm. so if we go for that approach uh, a not m plus a1 k that will give us this relationship between those coefficients and xi value so we can apply this these two coefficients by setting omega n as let's say first omega 1 and then another same omega n can be replaced again by setting it to a very uh, let's say other number or higher mode number for example omega 5 and let's say that i want to give xi equal to 5% to both of these modes first mode and fifth mode in this case when we plot this equation we get this u shaped curve right where these two points omega i and omega j these two points which i highlight with red color they are in our hand we can set our own value we can give our own a not and a1 and the program will construct this u shaped curve right so let me go back and show you yeah these are these two coefficients a not and a1 and uh, they are written for fixed xi value let's say that i want all first 10 modes of a building to be given a damping ratio of let's say 5% right so i will set xi equal to 0.1 10% i will set omega i as first mode omega 1 and omega j as omega 10 right and this i will put this set in this these two equations to get a not and a1 their value will be like 0.5 0.1 something like that and these two inputs i will give in the program and program will use this equation to construct c matrix right so these two this pair actually a not and a1 pair will ensure that my 10% damping is assigned to first 10 modes right but for 11th mode or 12th mode again you cannot control right so this is my first mode here and this is my 10th mode here i give xi equal to 
I calculate a naught and a one, and I put that in program. Program constructed that U shaped curve, and in that U shaped curve, almost the U is almost flat, right? So these two points are in our hand. We fix them to five percent, and in between also the number is almost five percent, four point five, four point seven, something like that, right? But for eleventh mode, which will be somewhere here, we cannot control now, right? program will automatically assign it this damping whatever is this number maybe 7% or 8% right so the summary is that we can control two modes and uh, we can control damping between these two modes but uh, beyond that we cannot control so we make sure that if for example we want to include five number of modes in our dynamic analysis and if we want to give let's say some particular damping value to all those five modes we set uh, for example omega i as omega 1 and omega j as omega 5 right actually you can plot this curve yourself it is simple the equation is directly available this equation or this equation same thing right this is in terms of uh, nth mode and this is written the same equation or rearranged in the, the same equation by putting n equal to first i and then n equal to j same equation so uh, you can plot you can plot that yourself also for your a not a1 and for your fixed value of xi so you can check how much is the difference but you cannot exactly <coughs> control that difference right because uh, the program is using a fixed equation to provide damping between omega i and omega j so if your uh, let's say third mode is somewhere here so it will be assigned this much damping right it will not be exactly 5% but uh, slightly less than that but at least better than this approach where you have uh, control only on one mode and all mo other modes are given automatically some unrealistic number may be right so you can plot it yourself and check what is the difference and whether that difference is acceptable to you or not and by the way if i plot modal damping approach uh, on the same graph on the same left one or right one if i plot same graph it will be what it, let's say i select 5% xi i value for all modes let's say this is my modal damping which i use in that case my xi will be simply xi i for all modes so it will be simply a horizontal line right for any omega uh, the program will be using 5% right so if you are going for uh, modal damping approach you can exactly fix what damping should be assigned to each mode so if you want that much accuracy go for modal damping approach right see even when you are using rayleigh damping approach still you, in order to calculate a not and a1 you have to fix some damping for a particular mode or at least two modes right so ultimately we are we are relying on that same experimental results and guidelines right that what damping is suitable for our type of structure so explicitly we are in in no position to construct that matrix so experimental results also mostly they are they are for first mode because it is very easy to excite a building in first mode first mode shape is like this for a high rise building or any building it is like this so and by the definition of a mode shape it is the weakest configuration it is a shape in which the structure itself wants to deform so which means that if you want to deform your structure in any shape mode shape should be the easiest shape to deform and for first mode it is evident that if you apply any load on top the structure will easily deform in first mode shape right so i have seen like real test which are conducted for high rise buildings what they can simply do is that uh, because you you are not concerned with the amplitude of vibration the accelerometers which are installed at different levels they are sensitive enough to capture any ambient vibration also so people can simply push 
in a harmonic manner they can push a shear wall by their own hands at the top and that excitation is enough for having some some recording which is uh, of reasonable importance for calculating damping ratio for example so periodically the building can be pushed or it can be hit by a hammer and the mass of that hammer or force of that hammer can be far far less than the mass of the structure itself right so it is supposed to be a non destructive test even walking excitations or any small impact excitation is enough for that recording to get recorded and then analyzed right so you can imagine a a water pump which is uh, running in a particular building at least you can feel that something some equipment is yes. is is in operational mode but th that vibration is still very high sensors can even record vibrations far less than what are produced by that water pump in one building right so uh, actually the amplitude is not important you need to have some free vibration response which is decaying and the rate of decay is what gives you damping right so the ratio relative ratio first peak and then next peak and next peak how it is decaying with time that gives you xi value experimentally and those experimental numbers guide us that what damping we should use for for new buildings we are discussing currently linear structures so xi xi actually whatever xi i am discussing about is is viscous damping it is a damping which is uh, which is not induced by any damage which is inherently there even when you have an intact structure right when structure have some damage it response goes to non linear range then you have hysteretic damping a damping caused by damage of the structure opening and closing of cracks yielding of rebars that damping is a different type of damping that we are currently not discussing right we are discussing initial viscous damping which will always be there even when structure is is linear elastic right actually there are different kinds of dampers which additionally provide the source of damping and one of the type of those dampers is fluid viscous damper fvd and those fluid viscous damper provide additional damping but that damping is also different from hysteretic damping right so when we actually model that in a real structure that fluid fluid viscous damping it will contribute to the in energy dissipation capacity right that is related to the control of vibration topic right so that is when we we are not re relying on the initial viscous damping we think that we need more damping to suppress response in that case we go for that approach right otherwise this 5% 2% 4% this is initial viscous damping inherent damping this will be always there not provided by any damper not provided by any specific source of damping it is a lumped value representing all phenomena which we cannot explicitly model in our mathematical model so we just lump them under one damping force which have one simple linear model fd is equal to damping coefficient times velocity right we actually in in particular base isolation approach which is used for control of vibrations we use a material which has very high vertical stiffness but very low lateral stiffness so imagine that your structure is this one it is supported by a material and then it is resting on ground that material for example is selected such that that it is very stiff in the axial direction vertical direction but very loose or very uh, less stiff flexible in the lateral direction right so when this kind of a material is 
shaken in the horizontal direction uh, the low lateral stiffness will actually uh, decouple the horizontal movement at the base from the movement of superstructure. So, the superstructure which is resting on that material that can still remain standing while the the uh, the substructure is being shaken by some ground shaking. While having the same or very high vertical stiffness right. So, so that uncoupling or decoupling uh, of the lateral shaking from the superstructural motion that should not be uh, I mean uh, that should not affect the vertical stiffness of your material right. So, while supporting the dead weight or gravity weight of the structure itself it can uncouple the horizontal shaking. So, if you want to categorize this base isolation into any category it this itself is a big category and conceptually you can think that we are we are actually elongating the natural time period of your structure. When you model that base isolation material also in your computer model and compare it with the fixed base structure you will see that the time period for base isolated structure will be higher than uh, what is of the fixed support structure. So, in seismic analysis we will be studying maybe later that when you elongate time period you are actually reducing seismic demands right. So, this is the mechanism for base isolated structures. Uh, it is not that you are additionally including a source of damping that is one parallel approach Sir, of suppressing. Yeah, we can there are different ways to describe this one way is that you stop any transmissibility or flow of energy from from base to top or from foundation to superstructure right. Again in bridges you use both dampers as well as bearings. So, bearings are based on the principle of isolation dampers are based on the idea of additional damping ratio. So, basically you are isolating one motion with another motion. So, they they should be categorized under under isolation uh, category and not dampers, but there are uh, some hybrid dampers also or other type of uh, mixed kind of control vibration techniques uh, 